everybody. Welcome to Wellness Woman 40 and Beyond show. Don't you just love live, uh, radio, live TV, live video? Last week I was with you and we were talking about Alzheimer's and dementia and all this great information. And then it, it look, I looked at the video later. It looked kind of crazy, but truly I was recording from my daughter's apartment and in the hallway, I could hear people running and screaming but i thought it was you know just the average saturday night you know you know you know how the 30 somethings are sometimes a little weird <laughs> a little party party on a weekday and then somebody was banged on my daughter's door talking about get out get out and i was like what and i said oh and i could then i could hear the fire uh, engine and, and i could smell a little bit of smoke then and i told rachel and everybody else okay i gotta go fire so i'm okay i'm black in fact I got so scared, I was literally scared straight. <laughs> Last time I saw you, my hair was curly and up, but seriously, I just decided every once in a while, I decided to just go for um, a different look. And so here I am, I'm, I'm straight now for a while. I don't know how long it's gonna last, but you know, I decided I was gonna do this because I was gonna go out and celebrate my eighth anniversary in business. I'm so excited. Praise Works Health and Wellness has been in business for it's eight years and it's the parent company of the products and services that come from Wellness Woman 40 and beyond. And um, I was celebrating with some friends and we went to go get sake. And I had this great idea. I, I like sake. I really am not a drinker. And I'm not just saying that because I'm in wellness. I'm saying that because after one or two shots of whatever, it's never a, a shot of wine. I'm not talking about whiskey. I just fall asleep. I'm just the worst I'm the worst drinking buddy ever, have always been that way. But I do like sake. I enjoy sake. And I never get a hangover, a headache. And so I'm drinking a little bit of sake. And they brought out this really great steamed broccoli. And I don't know what it was about this broccoli. It was so good. And then they brought some Japanese beer. Now, I'm not a beer drinker. But I thought I would try Japanese beer. After a couple of sakes, you know, my little ambitions are going down. I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to drink some, some Japanese beer. So I had some Japanese beer and broccoli. When I left that place, I came in with a pretty flat stomach. I left looking like I was three months pregnant. I'm like, what the heck is going on here? I was so bloated. So I said, okay, I know it's something that I ate. I could not have possibly gained 15 pounds in one city eating sushi, sushi and drinking Japanese beer and sake. So I did some research and I learned some things. And I think this is really important for us to know because some of these things that cause bloating are things that a lot of us eat, especially as over 40 somethings. Uh, we have a very fast lifestyle. So when you're over 40, you might be raising kids and still working. You know, you might want to plop, let's say, a frozen dinner into your microwave. That is our first food that causes bloating. Now, never mind about the fact that most frozen foods, I would say, I don't think so. If you can cook fresh, that's the way to go. But I'm not really talking about that piece. Let's say that you're just doing a frozen food. Maybe it's a healthy frozen food that you got at Trader Joe's or something, some kind of gourmet with no preservatives, adders, or whatever. Well, believe it or not, most frozen foods and canned goods and things like that are have a lot of salt in them to boost the flavor. And you always want to check the labels, but even some of the most healthiest things that you think would be okay as frozen, they have it. And it's that salt that causes the bloating. So I would say in general, read the labels on frozen foods. If it's your favorite little banquet pot pie, don't do it. If you want to, you know, get into that little skinny mini thing on the weekend, do not use frozen foods or canned goods in general. That broccoli that I was eating that I just love so much, I was telling you about, believe it or not, is something, it produces gas in the GI tract, and that's what helps to bloat you up. In fact, uh, cruciferous vegetables like uh, kale and broccoli, um, they contain a type of sugar that produces um, extra gas in your system. And I'm not saying get rid of it. I'm just saying that, you know, all things in moderation. When you um, eat the broccoli raw, you have much less of a chance of actual gas. But when you steam it or cook it or add it to soups and things like that, and that might bloat you a little bit. So once again, if you want to get into that skinny mini cocktail dress or those skinny jeans <laughs> that you're looking forward to putting on, uh, or you have them on, don't go out and eat a bunch of broccoli because you probably will have a little gas and you will bloat. Of course, you know all about dairy. I'm sure you've heard all around about dairy and why you shouldn't eat it. Well, here's another reason why you shouldn't eat a lot of dairy. It does help to cause gas. 
it breaks down the way um, the gut bacteria breaks down the milk, it causes gas and it causes your stomach to bloat, believe it or not. Now, I am a proponent that most adults shouldn't be drinking any dairy anyway. If you're concerned about calcium, then let's drink some uh, uh, almond milk that has so much more calcium in it, like 50% or more than what you would get from eggs, any, not eggs, from um, dairy anyway, and from cheese and, you know, all those other things that really don't serve us well. In many ways, it can um, increase the mucus lining. Uh, it's not great for our GI tract, causes indigestion. And of course, some of us are lactose intolerant. So we need to find other substitutes. And there's so much out there. Educate yourself. I love almond milk and I drink it whenever I can. And, um, you know, a little yogurt here and there is not going to kill you. But I'm just saying, if you have a steady diet of this stuff all the time, not only is it not good for you in general, it definitely will help to bloat you. Now, here's another one. You're thinking you're doing yourself a favor because you're not drinking regular soda all the time, right? You're drinking diet soda. Well, I hate to tell you, diet soda, especially if you're lactose intolerant and sensitive to dairy already, makes it even worse when it comes to getting bloated. Uh, it's really an uncomfortable, full, full feeling that you'll have drinking diet soda. That's one of the things that causes you not to want to eat, you know, because of it's got that artificial sweetener in there and you, it takes away your appetite for a second. But the reality is that it's that, that sweetness that, that disrupts the um, microbiota, and that's what's, what helps with the digestion, and that's why you end up getting a bigger belly. Now, have you ever wondered about all these people all the time that drink diet soda forever and ever and ever, and they never seem to lose weight? I used to think it was because they're drinking diet soda and they're having a pizza. <laughs> I never did understand that, that rationale there. But also, Diet soda really does promote serious bloating of the stomach over time. So for those of you who are drinking that diet soda in the morning in lieu of coffee, you may want to rethink that. You know, coffee can be a good fat burner, by the way, if you put coconut oil in it. I'm just saying. Okay. Now, here's one that I have a real problem with because I love it. This is what I eat um, instead of meat. I eat a lot of rice and beans. I love rice and beans. It makes me feel good. It's comfort food. So I'm not saying that you can't do it. It's just that it does produce gas in the gut, believe it or not. Um, again, it's, it's, it definitely is a superfood because when you um, combine legumes with rice, you have a complete protein. But if you are going to have like a big meal and your rice and beans is going to be part of that, you might want to not have as much rice and beans because it's not going to, it's going to cause you to be full, that's true, but it's also going to cause your little gut to grow a little bit right then and there, like real time. So you might want to watch that. Now here's something else. You know how sometimes we might chew on a stick of gum so that we don't eat or so that we can kind of sati you know, satiate our appetite? Uh, lose weight? Well, you might lose weight by doing that, by not eating. I, I don't agree that that's the best way to lose weight by starving yourself. But if you are trying to skip a meal or something like that, you stick some gum in there and you're wondering why your stomach is still a little bloaty, well, believe it or not, chewing gum or sucking on hard candy like a lot of people do, you end up swallowing air. And that causes over time for your stomach to get more bloated. <laughs> Who knew? I would never have thought that. But absolutely. So there you go. You've got some things that you can think about in terms of what you're doing in your diet to help with that bloat feeling. You've got the idea of, uh, you know, excuse the sound in the background. There's water going. I don't know why the water's going when I'm recording. Sorry about that. But you've got beer. You want to calm down frozen dinners. No, no, no. Anyway, no, no. Bloating or not, not the best thing for you. Broccoli, love broccoli, but eat it raw. Don't steam it. Dairy. Now, you know I've told you about dairy before, ladies. Come on now. Let's find a substitute. But here's another reason. It will bloat you. Diet soda, not a good thing anyway. But for those of you who are thinking that you're losing weight and wondering why your stomach's still sticking out, now you know why. <laughs> That's one of the reasons. Legumes, a wonderful superfood. Just be careful what you combine it with because it could cause a lot of gas. Gum. <laughs> you're filling yourself up with a lot of hot air. <laughs> but... You know, sucking on candy, you shouldn't be sucking on candy anyway. But anyway, gum and candy together brings an air into your system and you get this nice little tummy. So, what's a girl to do? 
<laughs> Sometimes I feel like the only thing we can do is be breatharians because <laughs> we can't eat anything. But and then the air is bad too, so we're just we're just in luck. We're just in bad luck. So therefore, we're just going to do the best that we can. So let's educate ourselves on what we can do to counteract some of the bloating and to help our little tummies. Here's something that's really good. It's got potassium, magnesium, and it really does have some gut busting effects. And that is bananas because it helps to lower your sodium levels. If you're lowering your sodium levels, you're not retaining that water as much. So that's a really good one to do. Now here's another one for those of you who like to drink a little tea and you want to maybe have some tea that's medicinal, you know, it's helping you as well as uh, maybe calming you too, it's fennel. Put some fennel in water and drink it as a tea. It may not be the best tasting thing, but here's the good news. It will help you a little bit with gas and it helps you with that bloated look over time. If you try to drink fennel tea once a day with all these other things that we're talking about doing, get rid of some of the bad stuff and adding some of the good stuff like bananas and fennel tea, you will have less of a bulging, bloaty tummy. Uh, here's another one. Bloating can sometimes be caused, you know, by water retention. So if you're eating watermelon, which is like drinking water, it helps to get the water out. I mean, it really does. I know that sounds crazy. To be, and, and you've heard this before, I'm sure. If you drink more water, you'll lose more water in the process too. So drinking water, that goes without saying, uh, that you want to drink as much water as you can, especially when you're trying to lose weight or when you have gas. It does help to get stuff moving and to get that gas out. Um, oh, I meant to tell you too, fennel is a diuretic. Interesting, isn't it? It helps with gas and bulging tummies, but it's also a diuretic. Interesting. A natural diuretic. Like that much better than those pills you might be dropping. Peppermint, something else that's soothing to a gassy stomach, uh, but also it helps to fight cramping that you might get. Um, and I'm not talking about peppermint candy. Let's get away from that candy, ladies. I'm talking about peppermint tea. It'll help you with the gas and help you get rid of the gas from the bloaty stomach. Uh, here's another one. You know, I have learned so much lately about cucumbers. Cucumbers have so many wonderful qualities. And here's another one. It helps you with the bloaty stomach and the gas. It's one of your best friends when it comes to bloating too much. You can eat some cucumber. Now, you know, cucumber is made of quite a bit of water. And that might be one of the reasons why it's so good. Papaya. Mmm, sweet. Okay, here you go. It's not candy, but it's something sweet. Okay. Um, it's packed with an enzyme called papain. And that enzyme has been known to help with gas problems and bloating problems. So getting a little bit of papaya, um, you don't have to eat the whole thing. You know, I mean, it is high in sugar, so you can watch that part. And it is a carb, but just a few slices of papaya uh, would be great if you're having a bloaty tummy. Uh, here's another one that is a cure-all for so many things and also for gassy, bloaty stomach. And that's ginger. Okay, now maybe I'm getting that kind of tummy they say everybody talks about when you get over 50, 60, or whatever. But I'm glad that it's back. Next week, though, I don't know about next week. I have to do more research. Maybe week after next, I'm going to talk about something else. For those of us who have the big butts and thighs, what can we do to reduce them? What exercises really work? Now, I used to think that squats and things like that would really work. I do a lot of squats already. Well, I'm here to tell you that actually just kind of lifts it up and rounder. But if you're interested in losing a little weight in your thighs and maybe rounding out your, your back end, we're going to talk about that in a couple of weeks because I have, I'm on this quest to be the best that I can be by 60. So all the things that I'm talking to you about over the next few weeks are going to be things that you're going to want to do to, I don't know, maybe not turning 60, but maybe help you get to 60. And I'll be talking to you about the things that I'm experimenting with and things that I'm doing. I mean, the hair was one thing. Now I know how to bloat. Let's see what I come up with <laughs> next week. We 
talked about Alzheimer's, but we had a fire. Sorry about that. <laughs> but let's see what we'll talk about next week. Thanks so much for tuning in. And listen, come visit me at praiseworks.biz. And there you'll find all kinds of information about how to be well in your mind, body, and spirit. And pretty soon I'm going to have a brand new site. You can still go to praiseworks.biz, but it's going to lead you to my brand new site, my wellnesswoman40.com site. On this site, there's going to be the Wellness Woman 40 and Beyond Holistic Academy. There's going to be the Wellness Woman Show. You're, I'm going to have all my social media there. My blog is going to be there. The Wellness Woman 40 and Beyond magazine is going to be there. And some of the best products on the market that I endorse, that I use, that I think you should buy to help you to be well in your mind, your body, and your spirit. It's going to be launching in July, and I'm really working hard and pulling everything together. I'll be sharing with you some of the stuff that's coming on. I'm very excited. Thanks so much for joining me on the Wellness Woman Show. I hope you've enjoyed it. We'll see you again next time. <music>